This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. The accrued income scheme does not come up very often in an exam. Um, and the information that you have here is as much information as you are going to need if it ever does um, the calculation at the bottom. What it is, is what's known as anti-avoidance legislation. In my introduction, I mentioned the law gets involved in tax. And this is legislation or laws that have been put in place in the tax system to um, stop you avoiding paying tax by doing certain things. So corporate bonds where or uh, government stock where somebody invests a large sum of money with the government and the government in return then pays them interest twice a year that's normally the case if you sold the shares the stock that you've bought it's exempt from capital gains tax so you don't pay any tax on it so what you could do potentially is to sell that before the interest is due so you don't pay any interest either so this anti-avoidance legislation stops you from doing that. So in the example you've got here, 1st of July 23, a taxpayer bought the face value, £120,000 worth of executive stock. So they bought it, paid into the government, and the government says, I'm going to pay you 2.5% interest a year fixed. And they paid £125,000 for it. Interest is payable twice a year, 30th of June, and the end of the year 31st of December however this person decides to sell on the 1st of December 23 now there's again there's an increase in what they've so they spent 125 received 127 so they've made a gain of 2000 but it's exempt from capital gains tax and no interest because um, they got rid of it before the date however um, under the accrued income scheme, the following amount is taxed as income. So you've got 120,000, that's your face value. 2.5% is the interest percentage that you're receiving. Five months, so that's from the 1st of July, July, August, September, October and November. Five months of interest that you are entitled to pay tax on. You have tried to avoid and we're not going to let you. Calculation is 1,250. That would go in your income tax computation. Now, the person who has bought, so this is the seller, the person who is buying the interest will, on the 31st of December, receive some interest of £1,500, which is the interest that they would normally receive. However, because 1,250 has been taxed on the seller, then they only pay tax on the 250 under this scheme otherwise that would be over penalizing because the seller would pay tax on 1250 and the buyer on 1500 and obviously that's not fair um, and that's how it would work so that's the sort of calculation you might have to do you might get an example like that and you might be asked to work out that figure simple as okay personal allowance let's move on to personal allowance we know what that is it's a tax-free amount we know where it goes because we've been doing it um, um, in the beginning of this chapter. First against non-savings, then against savings, and finally dividends if there's anything left. That is the amount and it's found in the tax tables. Now, the thing with the personal allowance is it's been frozen for three years um, in the UK because every year that you freeze it means that if your income is going up, you're actually paying more tax. The government cannot mess with the basic rate band. Most individuals in this country know that they pay tax at 20%. If you start messing with that, there's uproar. It's all over the news, it's headlines, the budget, whatever. The government can't do it. It's, it's not the right thing to do um, in order to keep your job. Um, but as I explained um, in the introduction, tax that they receive that's the government's income that they then need to spend on expenses now the expenses continue to go up and the government needs more money in if it can't raise the basic rate or the high rate or the additional rate 
um, then it needs to raise tax somehow. So they can play around with this uh, personal allowance. So it mentions here, the allowance is gradually reduced to nil where your ANI, your adjusted net income, exceeds 100,000. So you're already a high rate taxpayer. Uh, you may even be a, an additional rate taxpayer. Um, and basically you lose your personal allowance as that goes on. So that's what we're going to have a look at now. So your adjusted net income calculation. Now this is something that they might ask you because it's obviously you need to remember this little order of things. So your net income is your figure from your um, computation. We're going to have a look at some examples so you'll see how it works. Less any gift aid, gross gift aid donations or any pension contributions that you make. Now those two will make more sense as you go further on in the course. Just bear them in mind. So gross gift aid um, donations and gross pension contributions, they reduce your net income down to your adjusted net income. Now, where the net that adjusted net income is more than a hundred thousand pounds, the pay as you earn, uh, that sorry, the personal allowance is reduced by, and there's your formula, half. So, a person with an adjusted net income of one two five one forty or more is not entitled to any personal allowances. So, an additional rate taxpayer has lost all their allowances. Um, for that, so they obviously pay um, extra another one thousand two hundred and fifty pounds at uh, that top slice. So let's have a look at example number seven. Here we have Ingrid, who's received employment income of one hundred and eight thousand, on which thirty two thousand was deducted at source on to pay you in. Only one source of income, so we only need um, one page for this clean page so we are looking at Ingrid labels are no good 23 24 and we've got non savings income now again there's only one form of income um, therefore, you don't need to put all the various different columns in. So we have employment income. Of £108,000. Now, less personal allowance. Okay, they are entitled to a personal allowance. But we need to know how much of that personal allowance... Um, they are entitled to. So let's do a little bit of a working. Workings are important. You must clearly show what they are, working number one, and then you would cross-reference that to your um, pro forma, your answer, because that's the answer. Um, so clearly show your workings separately. Show the whole process that you have been through. Um, and then obviously your answer goes into there. So, normal allowance is 12,570. Now, a hundred. there are no gross payments either for gift aid or for pensions in this. So we're just doing a simple example. Now the limit is a hundred thousand therefore she is eight thousand over the limit we multiply that by fifty percent and take off the balance so that means that her adjusted personal allowance is 8,570, bringing her income down to 99,430. Okay, shall we now work out the tax liability for 99,430? 
income tax. So basic rate. Now we know she's going to be above that. So 37,700, always check at 20%, which is 7,540. Then high rate, 90, what's her income? 99,430. So this is the balancing figure. And the balancing figure is 61,730. That would be taxed at 40%, which is 24,692 giving a total liability of 32,232. Don't forget to go back to the question, check whether there's any pay as you earn, and there was, in this case, of 32,000, which means that she now has a payable tax liability of £232, which hasn't been collected through her... Um, through her pay as you earn code now i just want to show you this where all the kind of marks would come in this obviously um, you might get half a mark for if you've got to do a full computation for that you've copied the question they give you some insight for that now this you're looking at uh, you've taken the correct figure you know what the limit is you know what the percentage is and you've done the correct calculation now, this would then give you maybe nothing for that, nothing for the answer, but you've got two for that. One for that, one for that, and one for that. So that's three, four, five, or even we we'll put that, that one half and make it a round number. So we've got half, two and a half, five marks. And the answer is £232 because that's the answer to the question. But all the marks are in the process that we have um, been through. So let's go back to and have a look at example number eight.